Hello everyone, this is Kenny Bruni from Cambridge Tech. Now welcome back to the continuation of our jungle series. Now in this video or in our past videos actually, we've learned about our views, calling in some templates and that's what you are seeing over here. And we have um, some nice templates. So we've clearly looked at templates. We are definitely going to look at intrinsic and more things about templates as we move along. We've also have some fair idea of the views and what the views actually does and we also touched on the urls as well now the next thing we'd want to look at is the model because as far as django is concerned we have the mvt the model view template the model handles a database so clearly we are going to see where we should be doing some of these things so then what is a model now in django as far as the architectural framework is concerned the model will relate to a database now every defined property is a column in the database model so we are going to see them as we move along so clearly we have an example over here so we can have something like our products so for the product model we can have the product name the category and the quantity okay so these columns okay as you can see over here these columns are going to be defined by the property or they are going to be property in our model so let's quickly move on to how we can build a model so now in order to build a model we have to go into um, and once again let me collapse everything we have over here all right so in order to build a model we know to, we need to go into our app okay now we have this and we have the model the views okay and the template is being handled over here so we have models over here now let's come in here and see what we can do now the first thing i'm going to do is the models are going to be classes okay so you're going to have a class and let's say we have products and this is going to inherit from this package model okay or models yeah this is going to inherit from models dot model now the properties are what we are going to define over here now we can have a name okay and this is going to be the name of the product and this is going to be models dot character field and this is where we try and define how our model should look like so i'm going to see a max length and a max length of 100 then i'm also going to say category and for the category i'm going to say models or char field and i'm also going to have a max length a max length of 20. then as far as the model is concerned we're also going to have quantity so i'm going to say quantity and quantity is going to be models dot and i'm going to choose what we call the positive integer field because our models cannot or our products cannot have a value of negative 20 so i want everything to be a positive integer field i should also be um mindful of the fact that our model can also be in fraction so i cannot have let's say a book and i'm going to have 1.5 books no it's going to be a positive integer field so it's going to be a whole number and i'm going to leave it blank as we have it over here so now there's our model now as far as the category is concerned we need to come up here and come and do something very interesting so i'm going to call this cati category so category is going to be that kind of category list that we are going to select and this is going to be a tuple and it is actually going to be a tuple of tuple so you have this over here and the first we have is cati category and we are going to have category over here then what i'm going to do is i'm going to duplicate this and sorry instead of category i think the first was stationary <laughs> sorry i just i was carried away stationary then we have electronics we have electronics 
then finally we have food over here all right so let me save this and check so as you can see we have uh, the names over here are not matching and we are missing c over here so electronics and dictionary is matching over here so now what we can do as far as this category is concerned is we want to make this a choice field okay so that we can have access to this category so we can also add another parameter and i'm going to say um, choices is equal to category so this is going to be a choice field and you are going to say category over there now when i do this i'm good to go i'm going to open things up over here and for the purpose of this demonstration we are going to use or we are going to start with the sqli3 database maybe along the line i suspect we may want to do something with mysql or postgres so we are also going to look at those options as well but before i do anything let me also put in a now of true and let me also do a now of true over here and finally i'll say a now of true here now i'm putting a null of true over here this is not um a very good thing to do when you actually want to deploy this but for the purposes of this we are going to add and delete and add and delete a couple of times and uh, sometimes if it is incumbent you put in a value over there and you miss out it is going to cause a lot of problems and that's why i'm putting a null of true over here so once again we have our models we have our database but then where can we find our database and remember when we first run our application over here i don't know if i'm going to see this okay yeah it says we have 18 unapplied migrations okay your projects may not work properly until you apply those migrations and yes we are not going to apply the migrations over here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to say python manage.py and before we apply those migrations we we'll do python manage.py and you we'll see make migration so i'll click on enter and it says do i want to do make migrate okay so it's make migrations okay so i'll do make migrations and as you can see it says what creates model products all right so now let's come to this migrations folder we have over here and let's go to um zero zero let me open this up over here zero 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 one like the first migration initial.py now when i click on this you can see that python or django is actually handling a lot of things for us so it says or well, create model and the name of the model is products the fields we have id models.auto field um auto created true primary key serial force and the question is we didn't even add id over here yes we don't have to add id django will handle everything for us it also gives us and this is a name that we specified this is a category and this is a quantity we specified in our model so this is going to be done immediately we do make migration so it is in four minutes now what's next we need to do is we need to do python manage dot pi and i'm going to say migrate so this migrate let me open things up over here because a lot of migrations are happening over here so clearly python has a number of things for us and we are going to see some of them very soon but it also gives us um let me come back here open this okay our project folder and go to urls.py now as you can see we have and we didn't write this this was already given to us we have something and this is actually a url so this is a path so this actually leads us to somewhere so if we should go into our urls and do for slash admin it should take us somewhere so now let's come here and once again i'm just going to open this up in another tab so that we have access to anything we are doing so let's do for slash admin and here we go so python creates some kind of administrative panel for us that we can use to manage our application or our projects 
but in this case it is asking us for a username and a password and we haven't provided or we haven't done anything of that sort so we need to come back here and what we are going to do is we are going to say um, python manage dot pi and we are going to create a super user and super i mean create super user is together so when i press enter it says um i should provide a username so for the username i'm going to say admin and it says i should provide a password so i'll do admin at gmail.com and it says um i should provide a password okay so now this is where we have the password so i'll type in a short password it says password again and it says the password is too short it is i mean those security features that we need to comply with but then i'm just going to override this and say yes and it says super user created successfully so now i can log in over here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to say admin and my password is one two three four and i'll log in wow so i have this interface created for us so let me just zoom in so that you see things properly over here so what we have over here is we have quite a number of things happening over here now we didn't create anything over here so far we have users and where is users okay now let me click on this now users is actually every user we register into our application now remember we just registered admin okay and admin has privileges admin can do a lot of things that any other user who is not an admin shouldn't be able to do and we also have groups over here so far we haven't talked about groups we are going to look at groups later so this is what we have we can also create um a user in here so what i can do is i can say add user and i can provide the username a password and things of that sort. so let me say i have ken so ken is going to be another user and this time around this is going to enforce me to type in a proper password so i'll type in a more secured password other than just one two three so when i click on save it says well my passwords do not match okay so let me type them properly all right so when i click on save now i have ken has been created for me okay and it's asking me to provide um username i mean these fields are not um mandatory so i can just skip them and just go and click on save okay so now as you can see we have ken has been created now when i click on ken and come in here you can see that we have permissions over here now ken is active and as the inscription over here goes this designates whether the user should be treated as active um unselect this instead of deleting accounts okay then you have the staff status so designate whether the user can log into the admin site okay so as you can see this can that i created is not having permission to log into the admin site and we are going to see it's very soon and we have a super user so designate that um this user has all permissions without explicitly assigning them okay so it is very important we see some of these things now when i come back into admin admin has some power so admin because we created it uh, using the super user it says it's a super user it is um staff status is also active and admin has a lot of privileges as compared to just ken all right so what i'm going to do next is remember we created our model but then we are not seeing it over here now in order to see our model we simply have to come and once again let me uh, collapse this into our dashboard um app we need to come to admin.py and first and foremost we need to import our model over here so i'm going to say from the current folder because this admin.py and models are in the same folder okay so i'll say from the current folder into models i want to import and i want to import products then the next thing i need to do over here so it says what register your models here so i want to register my model so i'll say admin dot site dot register and what do i register or what do i want to register i want to register the product model so when i save this just by doing this and save and let me refresh this we can see that we are going to see our products 
model being displayed over here now let me click on home we have the app name is dashboard and our products is being displayed over here now when i click on this and add products i now have access to the products i can add so for instance let's say i want to add ball pen marker so for ball pen marker i need to specify whether it is stationary electronics or food and clearly it is stationary and i want to say the quantity that i am inputting into a database is 100 so when i save this now you have products objects one you have product object one now this can look um, a little bit creepy okay so in order to work things around it we need to come back into our class project um products and we need to define a strange representation of this product okay what we want to um, make it look like or how we want to make it appear in our admin panel so i'm going to define a function and this is going to be str so let me start off again so i'll do def a double underscore str a double underscore and i'll pass in self and this is going to return okay so what do i want to see and let me put out a formatted string over here so i'm going to say um self dot name okay and since this is a format test string, I can add in some few things over here. So self.name. And I can also say self.quantity. Okay, so when I do self.name, self.quantity, when I come back here, okay, before I refresh, you are going to see that self.name is going to return the name of the product, which is ball pen marker or whatever I named it. And it's also going to return the quantity I typed in over there, which is 100. So when I refresh, this is what we wanted okay so ball pen marker and dash 100 so when we actually put in a strange representation of things it kind of make it look very descriptive and um appear exactly how we want it now in order to actually make this properly work you see this is our model and we've actually applied some changes to it now the view is looking good but maybe we may run into some problems so what i prefer you do is you also run the migrations once again so make migrations okay then i'll say migrate so when i do migrations i want no migration to apply okay so you don't have any problem over here okay so now let's add in more data over here so let me click on this and another product i want to add is let's say i want to add in rice and rice is obviously food um let me say bag of rice um bag of rice and the quantity is 200 when i save this we have a bag of rice 200 over here let me add in another and this is going to be the hp laptop and the category is electronics and the quantity is 20 and we can go on and on and on okay so this is the data we have in our database all right but then when we come to our products table we don't have this data over and that's because we haven't done anything to bring it over here so in the next video you are going to see how we can um, write in logic to bring in our data onto our templates now if you find this tutorial very interesting there are a couple of ways you can help me grow my channel kindly subscribe to cambrotech and don't forget to hit on the notification button so that whenever i release a video you'll be duly notified also, share this video with friends and family who find this content very useful. At Cambrotech, we say learn programming. You can do it. Also, don't forget to pass in a comment or ask in any question you deem necessary or seek clarification to any question that you want. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.